Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. I'm now answering question number nine, which is the last question on the Pure Mathematics P2 um, International A-Level at Excel um, June 2021 exam. <laughs> this is a question here about differentiation and its applications. And here we have a question which tells us about this cube, um, a square-based open-top box. The height of the box is h centimeters and the base edges each have lengths L centimeters. Given that the volume of the box is 250,000 cube centimeters, we have to show that the external surface area S of the box is given by this expression. Now these classic type of questions here, um, you know, they're, they're very common and you always are given a situation where you know two, you're given information about two aspects of a certain thing. Here we're given um, information about the volume of this box, which is equal to 250,000 cubed centimeters and we're also given some information about or we're asked to give it give an expression for the surface area of the box okay now we know that the surface area of a cube is given by the area of all its surfaces now the very important point here is they mention it's an open top box that means it does not have a lid it's open at the top so there's no surface um, at the top of the box so the surface area is made up of the base, which is L times L, we call it L squared. And it's made up of four of these rectangles around the side. So you've got you know, L times H, L times H, L times H, and L times H. There's four of them around the side. So you're going to have basically 4L times H, 4, H, four times HL. Okay, so that's plus 4 times H times L. Okay, so that is an expression for the surface area of this box. Okay, but this is in terms purely of L. We want to have in terms of H. All right, so what we've got to do is we've got to also think about how can we replace the L's with H's here? How can we replace, how can we get something of, so that we can express L in terms of H and replace the L with that term with H in it. Well, that's why they gave us this other piece of information. We can also make an expression for the volume of this box in terms of L and H. We know that the volume of the box is, you know, the width times the, uh, the height times the width times the length. So it's going to be L squared times H. That's the volume of this box, right? And we know that that volume is 2,500 centimeters cubed, as they told us here. Okay, so we can now say, all right, we can say that L squared times H is equal to 250,000, sorry, centimeters cubed. So we can have an expression for L in terms of H. So then I can replace the L's in here with something with H in it. So I know that L squared is equal to 250,000 divided by H. So I can replace this with 250,000 over H. And therefore, we know that L is equal to the square root of... 250,000 over h. Now, the square root of 250,000, okay, just, it'll probably be an exact, because 25 is a square number, so I'm guessing it's going to be an exact number, 250, and then three zeros, that gives you 500. So this, this is, L is 500 over the square root of h, okay, because the square root of 250,000 is 500. Because 500 times 500 gives you 25 and four zeros, that's correct, um, over the square root of h. So now what we can do is we can take our expression for s and we can replace the l squared with 250,000 over h plus 4 times h times, and we can replace the l here with 500 over the square root of h. And if you simplify that, it should be exactly what they asked us to show. So 250,000 divided by h plus, and that's going to be 4 times 500, which is, that's going to be 2,000. Okay, and you have h, this is h divided by the square root of h, which is the square root of h. Okay, 2,000 times the square root of h. And that's exactly what we had to show. 2,000 times the square root of h plus 250,000 over h. And there we have the answer for part a. So in a lot of students, they get kind of like uh, intimidated by such questions as this, and there's no need to be, okay? because they always tell you something about two aspects to have a certain object or certain uh, situation 
um, and you have information about two aspects of that. So here's the volume and the surface area. So you think about how to find the surface area of this in terms of the letters they gave you. And they gave you the volume. So think about how to find the volume also in terms of the letters they gave you. You'll notice that what you have to show, one of those letters isn't there. Here, the L isn't here in, in our answer. So we use that second expression for the volume, okay, which we found down here. Okay, and we make that letter that is not present in our um, in what we have to show the subject of that. So we made the L the subject of that. We, we had the L squared as well because you know this has an L squared in it. So we made that the subject of the formula and just replace it with that. Okay, so we replace the L squared with 250,000 over H and the L with 500 over the square root of H and everything worked out fine. Now, even if you did not get part A in this question, there's three marks. You do not need to know how to do part A in order to answer part B. So never just don't never take a question and look at part A, say I can't do that and then give up and then throw away the rest of the marks. Part B is actually worth five marks. Okay, so as I was saying for part B, it is not necessary for us to know how to do part A. Okay, part B is a question which you can get the five marks without even knowing how we got this because all we need is to take what they showed us, we have to show, so it's really given to us now, and we have to know how to differentiate this and how to answer this question, basically. So if you know how to do the differentiation part, you're going to get five marks that you would have thrown away if you just said, oh, I can't do part A, let me just forget the rest of the question. No, you'll still be able to salvage most marks in the question if, you know, if you don't just, uh, you know, get despondent and say, I don't have to do part A, forget it, I'm not going to do the rest of it, right? So always try to do what you can. If there's something you don't know how to do, just go into the next part and see if you can do it. Sometimes it doesn't depend on the first part, like in this case. So it says, use algebraic differentiation to show that S has a stationary point when H equals 250 to the power of K. Now, a stationary point is where that you end up with a maximum or a minimum, or it's a grade, where the gradient becomes zero of the, if, you, if you plot S against H. S, S is the surface area of the cube, and H is the height of the cube. All right, so there's a certain um, value of H which gives you a maximum or a minimum surface area. And we want to find, okay, that value of H which gives us that, you know, uh, value which is going to give us, I think for this case, it's, it's going to be a maximum. Does it say maximum here? Oh, it's a minimum. Okay, the minimum surface area. Okay, so uh, the H here is going to give us a minimum surface area when we find it. And we can justify why it's a minimum in part, B, part C. So basically, we need to find the rate of change of the surface area with respect to the height. How does the surface area change? as the height changes. And that's called ds dh. That's what we have to find, ds dh. It's not always called dy dx. In this case, the y is like the s and the x is like the, the h. All right, so ds dh is what we have to find. That's what we have to find. You have to make it equal to zero and then solve for h. Okay, and that will be the height at which this will be a, uh, have a stationary point. And then we can decide whether it's a minimum or maximum as part C tells us to. So we have to get this expression ready to be differentiated. So you have to have all the uh, letters, the variables, like which the H's, have to be in the numerator. So if you have something that's like 1 over H, you have to express it as H to the power of negative 1. That has to be H to the power of negative 1. Why? Because there's, little, there's like a little 1 down here in the power. And when you write it in the numerator, it's going to be to the power of negative 1 from the laws of indices. And anything that's in third form with the square root should be written in index form. So h to the power of the square root of h is the same as h to the power of a half. So this is times h to the power of a half. Once you've got everything written in index form and you have the everything in the numerator, okay, uh, you can then differentiate. I can now find ds dh. Now ds dh, you multiply by the power, so you have minus 250,000 h to the power of negative 2, take 1 from the power, so multiply by the power, take 1 from the power. And again, multiply by the, by the power, so that's 1,000, h to the power of negative a half. A half minus 1 is negative a half. Multiply by the power, then take 1 from the power. Now we have the differential of this expression, and we have to equate it to 0. So you have minus 250,000, h to the power of negative 2, okay, plus 1,000, h to the power of negative a half equals zero. Now we have to solve this equation. It looks a bit 
awkward, but actually it's not too difficult. First of all, we can divide both sides by a thousand to get rid of some of these zeros. If I divide both sides of this equation by a thousand, these zeros, three here and three here will disappear. So you're left with minus 250. And the other thing I could do is express the powers now as um, h to the power of two underneath. And this is going to be one over h to the power of a half. Put them back as positive powers in the denominator. All right now, I want to, I want to um, basically now express this in a way in which I will have no h's in the denominator. So what I can do is I can multiply both sides by the lowest common multiple of uh, these two numbers, and that's going to be h squared. If I multiply, if I multiply all the every term by h squared, you're going to end up with minus 250 plus, and this is going to give you um, h squared over h to the power of a half, which is, if I multiply this by h squared, you have h squared over h, h to the power of a half. Here you've got h squared, I'll just put it here so you see it cancelling out, equals 0 times h squared. So I'm multiplying both sides by h squared, the h squares cancel on this side, so you have minus 250 plus, this is h to the power of 3 over 2 equals 0. So we can say h to the power of 3 over 2 is equal to 250. So h is equal to, now, I want to find what h is. It's raised to the power of 3 over 2. It's raised to the power of 3 over 2. I want to get rid of that power of 3 over 2. So there's different ways you can think about it. Okay, they want our answer in index form, so I'm going to use indices. They want to add 250 to the power of something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this to a power that will eliminate 3 over 2. And when you raise this to a power of, of its reciprocal, like 2 over 3, when you multiply these powers, they cancel out. So when you raise something to a power of something, you multiply their powers. So 3 over 2 times 2 over 3 is 1. That's what I want. I want h. All right. So I have to also raise this to the power of 2 thirds as well. Therefore, I get 250 to the power of 2 thirds. And there's my answer. Okay. In the form that they requested. They want it in the form of 250, as we got, to the power of something, where this something k is a rational constant to be found. So we can say that the k that they asked us to find is 2 thirds. Okay, and there's the answer to part B of this question. All right, there's alternative ways you could have gone about answering it from here, but I like to deal with things in the um, you know, numerator. So what I did here is I basically multiplied by the LCM of the denominators to get rid of the denominator here, and you ended up with this as your answer. Okay, the h squared cancelled out, and you got h squared over h. Okay, and there we have the answer to this question. That's the answer to part B of this question, and now we're going to go on to part C. I think we'll need um, this expression here, the SDT. Okay, um, I need this, so let me just take this to the other side. Okay, now for part C. Um, in this question here, part C, they told us to justify by further differentiation that this value of H gives the minimum external surface area of the box. So we have to now justify that our value of h, which is 250 to the power of 2 thirds, okay, that value of h is going to give us the minimum external surface area of the box. So what we have to do here, um, there are different methods, but they've asked us specifically to use differentiation um, in order to do this. You could use what's called the tabular method and find what the gradient function is before this value, just before this value, and what the gradient function is just after this value, and then it will tell you whether it's a maximum or a minimum. Okay, so if the gradient before this value is positive and after this value is negative, then that means it was a maximum value. And if the gradient before this value was negative and then after this value was positive, then it would give you a minimum value. But we can't use that method because they've asked us to use differentiation. Okay, so what we've got to do is we've got to find the rate of change of the gradient. So we've got to differentiate this gradient function a further time. Okay. And that's because when something has a maximum, then the gradient is changing. It's going from a high gradient to a low gradient. So the gradient is actually decreasing. It's going from a positive value to zero to negative. So when you have a maximum, the rate of change of the gradient, which is d squared s dh squared, is a negative value because the gradient is, is going from, from a, a large value to a small value. And when you have a minimum, the opposite is happening. You're having, you've got a negative gradient before the turning point, and then it goes to a positive value. 
So the gradient is, is, is basically increasing. It's going from negative to zero to positive. So when you have a minimum, the second differential or the gradient of the gradient is going to be greater than zero. So if we find for this value of h that this is true, that the value that we get is a negative value, then it's a maximum. If we find for this value of h that the gradient, uh, the, the rate of change of the gradient is positive, okay, then we have a minimum value. And that's what we should find because it tells us to show that this is a minimum. So we should have the case where the, the second differential gives us a value which is greater than zero for this value of h. So we have to differentiate this again. So you have to differentiate the differential function again with respect to h. Okay, so this is not how you normally write it. You normally write it as this, d squared s over dh squared. I'm just trying to show you where this comes from. Okay, you're differentiating this function with respect to h again. So that's why it becomes d squared s over dh squared. Now that gives you, when you multiply minus 2 by minus 250,000, you get positive 500,000. 500,000. h to the power of, take 1 from the power, minus 3. And then you're going to have minus a half times 1,000, which is minus 500. And you take away 1 from a, a, a minus a half gives you minus 3 over 2. Okay, so that is a, an expression now for the second differential. And we've got to substitute h equals 250 to the power of 2 thirds into this function. That was the value of h that we found the, um, from the, you know, that was the value of h for the turning point. And we're going to now sh show that it's a minimum. <coughs> So what we're going to do is substitute that value. First of all, let's just get this in a more kind of friendly um, expression for us to substitute values in. So I'm going to write this as over h to the power of 3 minus 500 over h to the power of 3 over 2. Now I'm going to substitute these values in. So I have 500,000 divided by h cubed. That's 250 to the power of two thirds cubed. That's going to be 250 squared, isn't it? And that's 500, so minus, sorry, minus 500 over 250 to the power of two thirds to the power of three over two. Okay, and that will basically the, the power will cancel there. So that gives me 500,000 over, that's 250 squared minus 500 over 250. Okay, we can just stick that in the calculator and see what we get. So we have 500,000 over 250 squared. Okay, and you got minus, that's 2 basically, minus 2, 50, 500 over 250, and that gives you 6. That gives you 6. So we can say that, um, so that's d squared s over dh squared. Okay, dh squared when h is equal to 250 to the power of two thirds is equal to that so therefore when h is equal to 250 to the power of two thirds ds d squared s dh squared is greater than zero therefore it's a minimum so you must state that Okay, you must state that. You must state that the fact that you found that the second differential is greater than zero for this value of h that we found, then therefore it's a minimum value. It's a minimum, okay? It's not a maximum, it's a minimum. When the, when the second differential is greater than zero, we have a minimum uh, value for that particular answer. So there's the answer to this question, part C of question nine, and that concludes P2 um, for this uh, session of June 2021. Um, other questions that you would like to watch from this particular session will be found in the playlist that should appear at the end of the video in this area somewhere over here and other questions from this topic of differentiation from P2 and its applications can be found by clicking on the link that, that appears in the um, area over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking the link in the middle and other questions from other papers like P1 and P3 and P4, S1, M1 and also IGCSE um, questions can be found um, in the description below the video. You'll see links to those there. Thank you for watching and see you soon.